Yes, hi, this is uh, Mary Beryukov, and I do not have multiple sclerosis, but I have twin brothers who do. Uh, they also have been uh, diagnosed with uh, CCSVI, and the good news is that they have had uh, their veins liberated in Las Cabo, Mexico, and uh, the long-term prognosis looks great uh, for them now. They're healthier, they're happier, and they have uh, far more hope for the future. On this video, uh, I'm going to um, do um, try and, and, and stimulate some, some uh, vigorous uh, re uh, debate uh, about this uh, con contentious uh, two theories, uh, CCSVI and, and uh, autoimmune. And we're going to do a, a comprehension strategy that we call uh, compare and contrast because it's the best way to start a debate by looking at opposing uh, theories or opposing ideas on the same page rather than looking at them over a period of time in articles and, and abstracts and so forth. So we're going to start our, our first, uh, we'll do eight points of reference all together in parts one and two. And we'll start first then by looking at the uh, definition of CCSVI once again. So CCSVI is defined as uh, deformity in veins. This could take many shapes and, and forms. Uh, it basically, it restricts or compromises the blood flow from, from your most important organ in the body, which is the brain, and it has to affect your health. Uh, it needs to be treated as a condition wherever it's found. And this is the uh, area of concern for vascular surgeons and interventional radiologists. The opposing view is that it's an autoimmune disorder where the uh, immune cells uh, personally attack the, the, the brain cells. And the only way to suppress uh, suppress this uh, overactive immune system is by using drugs. Uh, an example of a, one of the newer drugs is called Desabri, and uh, the, the company actually reported uh, 63 brain infections uh, within the last five years, as well as 12 deaths. So it's up to the neurologist who, who look after these prescriptions and look after this theory. Another point is, is the research. Uh, if you look at CCSVI research, there are 47 countries um, with their expert panels that, that now uh, approve this condition or recognize it. There are at least 64 publications. These are articles and studies that I know of and probably a lot more. 2,000 plus uh, treatments worldwide to open veins and at least 90% plus correlation between MS and CCSVI. And these are conservative numbers. Now on the other hand, uh, we see uh, for non CCSVI group, uh, they have no funding. And in fact, we have an expert panel of our own uh, called the uh, Canadian Institute of Health Research, which consists of 17 uh, neurologists and uh, four executives from the uh, MS Society. And they've recently said that there's not enough evidence. And they carried on this to uh, the health minister, who before used to be basically a file clerk. Uh, who also has said there's no trials allowed, there's no funding, and there's no evidence. But, you know, you basically have to have a look um, that there, there really is a lot of worldwide evidence. So why not plug into what other people have discovered? Doctors, CCSVI doctors, um, we'll use one, one example here, Dr. Simka from Poland. Uh, he has done approximately 300 plus treatments. Uh, his uh, research has found 95% venous problems in people with MS. Uh, he follows an international protocol that many uh, international doctors follow in terms of pre-testing and post-testing. And uh, his, one of his common statements is, as soon as you have your first MS symptoms, uh, you need to have immediate treatment rather than allow this, this condition to develop. So what do we have as, as comparison? Uh, well, we have a neurologist. Um, his name is uh, Dr. Friedman. When he first heard of this theory, he basically said, well, this is a hoax. Uh, if, it, if it worked, I would be in it. Now, what he's done is he has, over the last few years, has, uh, has uh, been granted uh, $9 million uh, to do some stem cell therapy, you know, basically taking stem cells from the spine, I believe, uh, eliminating the old immune system and then replanting stem cells hoping to regrow uh, a new immune system. He also um, sits on a medical advisory panel with the MS Society 
and he grants himself all this money, uh, definitely a, a conflict of interest, and I think he should be questioned about that. Another point is, is uh, what, what is involved in CCSVI treatment. Uh, it's basically a, a simple diagnosis using a Dauber scan or a venogram to, to uh, chart the veins in the brain. Uh, if you do have congestion, then a balloon angioplasty will, will help to open it up. Uh, a one to two hour procedure. And the potential here is that it can replace drug treatments. So right away, uh, there's a financial issue that perhaps we could be holding back uh, further research into, into this uh, theory. The uh, non-CSVI uh, theory uh, treatment options are basically um, approved drug therapies. There's at least six of them on the MS Society homepage. I'll use an example here with uh, Dr. Trabulsi, who's the neurologist from the UBC MS Clinic, who uh, recently on a uh, radio show uh, was, was saying what wonderful therapies that, that he has and, and better and stronger ones coming in the future, talking about drugs. Interestingly enough, he's been granted uh, to also uh, some research money from the MS Society uh, to image veins. And uh, his co-researcher is Dr. Knox, who publicly said recently that she's not sure what an abnormal vein looks like. And, and these are the people we have who are studying possible treatment in our country. Uh, benefits of CCSVI? Well, we know that uh, venous dilation is safe. Uh, we know it's not about MS. Everybody who has congestion needs proper blood flow for proper health. We know that it's logical, it's ethical, it's humane, and you really cannot withhold treatment here. Uh, the procedure costs $1,500, basically. So on the other side, you know, we, we have uh, the drug benefits. And um, you have to talk to people about their effects from, from drugs. But I'll just talk about the cost involved here in looking for more drugs. The Canadian Institute of Health Research has put in at least $42 million in the past 10 years to find these immunosuppressing drugs. The MS Society has put in uh, $2.4 million uh, this year to study the images of abnormal veins as such and just recently have uh, put in another million dollars in preparation uh, in case they do find there's some, some kind of correlation here between uh, blood flow and, and congested veins. The average cost um, for, for MS drugs per, per person is anywhere from $20,000 to $40,000 a year uh, over, over a lifetime. So here's a big picture. The big picture is this, that any time a taxpayer or a politician or a health minister would sooner pay out twenty to forty thousand dollars a year for MS drugs versus a simple walk-in interventional procedure that costs fifteen hundred dollars, we need a serious debate in this country. So this will finish off uh, the uh, first part and uh, we'll have a look at the second part. Uh, definitely, if you would like more resources than anything that you've heard, um, you can request uh, information from gethelp at telus.net. You can also see the liberation journey that my brothers had uh, on youtube.com and just put in the word uh, Berikov. So again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to answering questions or comments or helping you with more information. So on to part two.